So we um, will go on with next talk by Lars Schillingstad on open simulation platform. So Lars Schillingstad is a senior research scientist from Sintef Ocean Research Institute in Trondheim, Norway. And his focus is on modeling and an analysis of complex marine system. And he is the main developer, one of the main developers of Open Simulation Platform, which he will present. Okay, thank you. Just give me a second here. Yeah, so uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. Um, I am going to talk about the Open Simulation Platform. Um, and I'm just going to refer to it as, uh, as the OSP since the name is rather long. So uh, just uh, remember what OSP stands for. Um, I'm going to talk about what the OSP is, uh, who it's for, why we made it and how it works. And my goal with this talk is uh, to hopefully spark your interest in the open simulation platform uh, so that maybe we can extend its reach beyond the maritime domain in the future. Uh, yeah, so uh, you've already introduced me, so I'm not going to dwell on this slide, but uh, if anyone wants to uh, reach out to me after the, after the conference, so then uh, feel free to do so if you have further questions or, or want to know more. So what is the OSP? The OSP uh, is two things, uh, or it consists of two things. First, it consists of a high-level model coupling interface built on top of the FMI. And what OSP, uh, this is called the uh, OSP interface specification or OSP IS. And what this does it, is it adds uh, an additional layer of semantical model description on top of the technical description that FMI provides. The second part of the OSP is a collection of open source co-simulation tools. And there's really nothing too fancy about these tools in terms of their co-simulation capabilities, at least not yet. Uh, but of course, the main points are that they support the OSP interface specification and that they are completely free to use for anyone. So who is the OSP meant for? Well, uh, the project originated in the maritime industry and was designed with the needs of that industry in mind. We had a set of use cases to guide the development, uh, and they were all related to the design, commissioning, and operation of ships and their onboard systems and equipment. Uh, having said that, the OSP may also be for you, because it turns out that it's the way it ended up, it's actually not all that maritime specific. I mean, there are some things about propellers and rudders and so on in the specification, but mostly it's about physical concepts like forces, voltages, and so on. And in fact, I would say it could be useful for anyone who wants to simulate complex cyber physical systems. And part of what I want to achieve with this talk is to hopefully convince you of the same. Um, and I should also mention that the organizations who develop the OSP, uh, we work in a whole bunch of different do domains, not just the maritime domain. So we are definitely interested in, in uh, extending it as well. And who are we? The core group behind the OSP consists of four organizations. It's DNV, who led the project and who are the world's largest classification society. And then you have Kongsberg, who is a major uh, technology corporation. And you have Sintef, which is my employer, uh, who are an independent technology research institute. And then you have NTNU, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And in addition to these four core partners, we had the support of 19 other major players in the global maritime industry, uh, including technology and equipment suppliers, shipbuilders, energy companies, uh, research institutes, and universities. And they provided both very useful guidance as well as financial support for the project. So why did we and all these companies feel that the OSP was needed in the first place? Uh, to do that, I need to talk to tell you that I need to talk a bit about the maritime industry. Uh, ships 
are basically the largest moving objects that we humans built. And they can carry large numbers of people and enormous values in, form, in the form of cargo or equipment. And I think it's safe to say that they're also among the most complex things we build. A ship, especially a large ship, consists of a large number of components and subsystems that need to work together. And many of these systems are critical in the sense that they control or affect the entire ship. Uh, examples include the power plant, the propulsion systems, the automatic pilot piloting and positioning systems, uh, large deck cranes, and so on. And if any of these systems fail, at best, it's costly. At worst, it's a major disaster. And of course, these large and complex systems are expensive to build, maintain, and operate, even when everything goes smoothly. So that's why it's beneficial to be able to design, test, and tweak things uh, virtually before you do anything with the real physical thing. And the final point I want to make here, which may not be immediately obvious to anyone outside the maritime sector, is that large ships are generally custom built. This is unlike how I, uh, or I'm not an expert in the car industry, but I imagine that in the car industry, you, uh, you uh, design a car, you agree with the equipment suppliers on the specs, and then you manufacture like 100,000 units or so. Uh, here in the maritime industry, you design the ship, you make agreements with possibly a group of new suppliers each time, and then you manufacture one unit, or maybe a few if you're lucky. Uh, so the upshot of this is that it's both very beneficial to build the virtual prototype of the ship, but it's also very laborious since you have to do the same thing over and over again with, uh, with, new, with different partners in the loop. Uh, and that's the reason why it traditionally simply hasn't been done, or when it has been done, it's been really, really expensive. So the whole point of the OSP initiative was to make the whole process smoother, cheaper, and nicer for everyone by developing a common collaboration platform for the entire maritime industry. No less. So what do we want? We want three things. We want interoperability, simplicity, and correctness. We want to enable collaboration across companies, across different engineering domains and physical domains and uh, simulation tools. We want to significantly reduce the time and the effort required to set up simulations. And we want to reduce the potential for errors. Uh, FMI took us much of the way there. Uh, some years ago, we had a project to create some guidelines and best practices for maritime co-simulation. And one of the strong recommendations that came out of that project was, of course, to use FMI. But people soon found that FMI on its own was not sufficient. It provided uh, people with binary compatibility and tool agnostic metadata, which are fantastic. But it says very little about how to build domain-specific interfaces out of primitive variables. And it still allows you to make nonsensical connections between subsystems. Variable uh, naming conventions can take you a part of the way, but there's not sufficient, I would say. We wanted something stricter and OSP was developed to fill that gap. So how does it work? At the core of the OSP interface specification is what we call an ontology. An ontology, if you're not familiar with the concept, is a formal machine readable description of the concepts within a certain domain and the relationships between them. Let me show you a small example. So these are uh, some typical variable types that you may find in a mechanical system. Maybe you have a body of some kind, uh, which gets a certain velocity because it's acted upon by a certain force, or maybe you have a fluid flowing through a pipe because it's under pressure. Now, typically these are pairs of variables that belong together and should be connected alongside each other. In other words, you don't want your force to be connected to one subsystem and the uh, associated velocity to be connected to a completely different, different one. Or maybe you have multiple of each type and it's important that the correct pairs are matched. Or maybe they're multidimensional and it's not obvious from the naming convention which components should be matched up with which when connecting two subsystems and so on. So we'll, what we did here is to define each pair to be a group um, and we have different types of groups. These particular variables form what we've called ports. And in this case, we have a linear mechanical port 
and the hydraulic port. And these concepts are linked to the, let me see if I can bring up a laser pointer. They are linked to uh, the variable concepts through contains a relationship. So a linear mechanical port contains a force and a velocity and so on. We also go a bit more meta and uh, define concepts that describe the more abstract entities in our, in our vocabulary, such as the property of being a variable group. Uh, and then we build from there. And uh, the ontology is just the structure, the concepts and the relations between them, uh, re represented here by boxes and arrows. Now this was a, was a very simplified example uh, of the actual OSP IS ontology, which is much larger and slightly different and which you can browse online on our web page if you're interested. Uh, I will provide a link to that at the end of my talk. So now you have the ontology, which unambiguously describes your domain. The next step then is to link your model components, which are generally the variables in your models, uh, to concepts in the ontology. And we do this by attaching an additional XML file to each FMU, similar to the FMI model description XML. And we've called it OSP model description XML. And the OSP interface specification specifies the XML schema for this file. Uh, and this is where you link your variables, for example, the p.f variable in the FMU to a certain concept in the, uh, in the ontology. And this is meant as a supplement to and not a replacement for the FMI model description XML file. And what we get out of this, if you look at this picture, this is, this is actually just a very simple system in, uh, in uh, ship technology terms. It's just a small subset of uh, components of a, of a small vessel, but it's already quite messy. There is lots of different variables and uh, the whole connection uh, diagram is very messy. With the uh, OSP, Lars, yes. Uh, Lars, looking at time, we should come to the conclusion soon. Yes, I have. Uh, yes, I'm actually almost there. This is this is all, almost my conclusion. Uh, with the OSP, we can make this much simpler. And the nice thing about this, we have we have now grouped a lot of variables, uh, and there is only one correct way to connect them, and we can check this mechanically that it has in fact been uh, correctly connect by using a tool which we call the OSP validator. And this uses the ontology to check for logical coherence in your connection diagram. So this is basically what the FMI, oh, sorry, about what the, uh, what the OSP is about. It's the combination of this, this standard and uh, the associated simulation tools. And what we want with this is to make uh, um, a common standard for the entire maritime industry so that vendors can more easily exchange simulation models. And what we want to do next is to extend this with new interfaces and concepts, like additional domains, control system types, connections to the marine environment, like wind and waves and uh, so on, uh, add support for coordinate systems. We want to harmonize with FMI3. So I'm looking forward to the next talks in this session. I think FMI3 will allow us to actually remove some things from the OSP, which is great. We want to make improvements to the OSP software, such as including DCP support, which was always on our to-do list, but we never got around to it. And finally, to uh, conquer first the maritime industry with our uh, standard, and then uh, hopefully the rest of the world. So now I'm, uh, I'm done. If you want to learn more, you can find uh, information at opensimulationplatform.com. And if you have further questions, as I said, you can contact me by email if you want. Thank you.